Hi, this is Burns Hargis with another edition of Inside OSU, and we are really inside OSU. One of the most beautiful buildings on our campus is Willard Hall, the education building, and we're in the basement of Winter Willard Hall, and the reason we're here today is because we want to talk about our energy conservation program. We partnered with Energy Education, Inc., which was founded by an OSU alum, Bill Spears, to do something about our use of energy and see if we couldn't conserve and save the costs of energy that uh, OSU was expending. Well, it's a great story. We started this in mid-2007. Uh, since that time, we estimate we have saved over $5 million. That's a lot of scholarship money. That's a lot of endowed chair money. It can go to our academic mission instead of up through the smokestack. And one of the people that's very, uh, very responsible for this success is our energy, our utility manager uh, here on campus, who is Dan Ferris. Dan, come on in. How are you today? Absolutely fine. How are you doing today? This is, uh, this is quite a success story. Yes, it is. Um, it's been such a great success because of the hard work of our dedicated team of physical plant employees. We've got everyone from engineers to energy managers, uh, HVAC and uh, controls technicians working hard every single day out in the field making sure we use the least amount of energy possible while still providing a good environment for so, education. So we actually have the people here doing it. It's not all energy education people. They're, they're educating us, but then we're executing the plan, right? That's absolutely correct. They advised us and, and educated our energy managers, and all the people that are doing this work are actually OSU employees, staff right here, part of the physical plant. How many do you have? Five? I got five energy managers, but we've got the entire physical plant working on this. We want to learn a little more today about how we actually are saving energy, and I think we can go in a control room here and get a good first taste, can we? Let's do Great. it. In Willard Hall, we have the privilege of 65 fan coil units plus four major air handlers, and I'm able to take the schedules for each one of those rooms and schedule each one of these fan coil units to go with whatever's going on in those spaces. So for instance, right here where you see that this one is off and this one is off and this one is off, that means those aren't running right now and therefore we're saving energy in those spaces so because not, there's nothing going on. So we're not heating or cooling those rooms now, Right. Because there's no classes Because there's on. nothing in there. There's nothing so, going so on. So like if a class started, uh, you know, in 15 minutes, would you turn it on when the class started or 15 minutes before no, sir, or what? No, sir. I would, I try to plan that at least an hour to an hour and a half ahead of time to make sure those spaces are comfortable so that the idea is that when people come into the spaces, they, they don't even know that we've ever turned it off. It's yeah. just not being used when no one's in the space. That's so, the goal. So it looks here to me like, well, there's several that aren't being used, but most of the classrooms are being used right now. We're in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. Uh, but uh, but then at night, you what happens? Do they all go off? If well, on? one of my favorite things to do is come in here about 10 o'clock at night. And at 10 o'clock at night, a lot of them are already down. But as soon as it hits 10 o'clock, they start popping off. So I can just watch the lights start going down. Do, 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 do. Then I walk through the building and verify that those units have indeed gone off and there's no disconnect between the electronic management system and what's going on down here in the control room. So, so. for an energy person, seeing energy go off is a real exciting it's thing. It's exciting. <laughs> yeah, it's very exciting. That's great. Now, I understand that this is sort of state of the art and we don't have this all over campus. We don't have this all over campus. This is very unique to Willard Hall, but I kind of wanted to brag about it because so, I think it's really neat. So we need to be a little more creative with a lot of our other buildings? A lot of our other buildings are multi-zone systems. In this building, we have you know one fan coil unit that serves several rooms, so I can work with those specific spaces, but many of them, it's an entire floor that is served by one air handler, and that, that makes it a little more challenging. But you can, you can shut down everything mm -hmm. but that floor, right, right? Exactly. which is a savings. Right, so if we have, for instance, I have classroom building, so after four o'clock, I mean, af on the fourth floor, after the computer labs go down, I can shut that entire floor down because there's nothing going on after they close at nine. And so, Dan, you, we're constantly monitoring these, these so that we can coordinate and be a little more effective. That's absolutely correct. I mean, we have fine-tuned our schedules as much as we can and we're continually trying to fine-tune them so that we are shutting down as many units as we can across campus that aren't being used. But you're you're reacting to what you're hearing from the from the academic side. You're not telling them when they can use those oh, classrooms. By no means. We're not trying to interrupt uh, the educational mission of the university whatsoever. We're just trying to not waste energy when it's not needed. 
Well, a student in this classroom wanted me to shut off the uh, air handler so that they don't have to take this exam. So, could you mind? Could no, no. Don't you <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we're going to go to another building that is a huge challenge, which is the uh, the Noble Research Center with all the windows, and I think you'll find that very interesting. Well, here we are in the always futuristic Noble Research Center, which is uh, not only a, a iconic structure here on campus, but quite an energy challenge, Dan. That's correct, and we're here with the rest of our energy manager team. We've got Patrick Wheeler, you've already met Jenny, we've got Dennis Byford, Tammy Johnson, and Casey Ashley. And this is Casey's uh, facility for her to do oh, the energy so management. this is your problem, this Casey. This is my building. We have not only office spaces in this building, but this is a heavily research building that most of the facilities um, in this building are research facilities. So right? you can't just shut something down and a whole experiment goes to That's pot. exactly right. One of the first things as energy managers that we did is we came into the different types of research facilities on campus, evaluated them and really made some careful decisions about what could and couldn't be done as far as um, gaining some energy savings. Typically a lot of window ex uh, exposure mm -hmm creates energy problems. It can. Um, you can see this building, we have a lot of natural lighting, which we try to take advantage of as much as possible, not only in this area, but throughout the entire building. There's many hallways where we can utilize that natural lighting. Um, you'll find not only in this building, but also in office spaces, you'll have a window with some blinds on it, and you want the light from that. And one thing that you can do to keep the heat from coming in, like you mentioned, is just kind of angle the slats up, and we found that works really well. You can and so keep we kind of have that. Exactly, th we that have effect. that. Have, can have the slats angled to keep the heat out and let the light in. And so, what's the bottom line? If we save some. Uh some energy here? We were hoping to get a t about a 10% reduction in what we had originally seen for our baseline and um, we've been running closer to 15, 18%. Let's go look at an office environment and see what we do there. Well, what I want to talk to you about is how all of we employees, staff members, faculty uh, for Oklahoma State, and really students, mm -hmm. can save energy, do our part. There are tons of opportunities for everybody on this campus. The OSU family can make a huge impact on how much energy we conserve on this campus. Everybody has a responsibility to make sure that they've shut off their lights and their monitors and their computers okay, well, and chargers go, for the end of the day. Yeah, let's go through that because all right, it's, I'm going home. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm done. Uh, give me a checklist. What should I do? Well, every employee at OSU should take the time to shut off their CPU they should go ahead and turn off their monitor at the monitor. Off is off. So you've actually then got to go down here and, mm -hmm. and uh, sh shut off the, uh, the computer itself. Yes. Okay. All right. I got that done. Now what else? Then turn off your monitor. Mm -hmm. Turn off your speakers. We would turn off your non-networked printers. Uh -huh. How do you know if day? your printer's networked? If your printer's in your office, it is very likely your personal printer. If you have a network printer, more than one person can print to it at okay, a time. Got it. All right. What else? We would also take the time to turn our blinds up, which you've done very well here. Turn the slats up at the end of the day. That keeps not out. Not down. Not down. We're going to try to keep out as much radiant heat as we can, especially in these coming summer months. Okay. Now, can you leave a, a lamp doesn't draw much, does it? Well, it draws enough that we need to turn it off at the end of the day. Really? Yeah. And also, that charger should be unplugged as well. Well, it's not charging. But it's still drawing energy. Really? Yes, it is. See, I didn't know that. I thought when it wasn't energizing, it uh, wasn't drawing any energy. No, every charger, your computer chargers, your phone chargers, all of those things. And, you know, students, this is the same thing for them. And these power strips, I have a power strip down here. These power strips are a great little tool. If you have a bank of things, especially in, in the residential life facilities, if you're living in one of the apartments and you have your whole TV stereo system all plugged into a single power strip, you can just turn off that power strip rather than unplugging each item. Now, I know some people think it's kind of a pain in the neck to have to bring up the computer every time you want to get on it, but it really is making a big difference. It really does make a big difference on this campus. The more we see our staff, faculty, and students get involved, the more savings we're seeing. This is an incredibly important initiative. We talk a lot about environmental consciousness, uh, about recycling, uh, renewable energy. Uh, nothing's more renewable than saving it in the first place. So, that's another episode of Inside OSU. Tammy, let's shut this place down and get out of here. Sounds you get like the a lights. Plan to me.